Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to draw rocks and stones. I'm going to do a series of videos on landscape and colored pencil and I'm going to show you how to draw different elements of landscape using colored pencils. I should say a few words about the materials before we move on with the main part of the video. The pencils are not that important. Uh, you can use any pencils you like. What's more important is the surface you're working on. I think the paper is more important. And I highly recommend uh, that you use sanded paper if you can find it. Um, if you can find or afford artist quality sanded paper like UART or pastel mat, that's great. If not, you can use a 1000 grit or an 800 grit sandpaper from the hardware store. That works great. Or you can create a sandpaper, which is what I did here. I used a bit of toned paper and I covered it with some clear gesso. A clear gesso is a primer that creates a textured surface that's similar to sandpaper. And uh, what that does, it helps you layer more easily and get, create some more vibrant colors and it creates some interesting textures. So it makes our job a little bit easier when drawing landscape. Anyway, uh, now I'm going to show you how I drew these rocks and uh, let's get on with the drawing process. So if you want to know how to draw and shade rocks and stones, it's just like with any other object. You have to understand how they interact with the light source so that you could explain the shape to the viewer. So if our light source is uh, coming from here, from the left and above, and we draw a shape, uh, like a simple one, for example a sphere. Uh, because of the light source, the lower part of the sphere and the right side of the sphere is going to be darker. The part of the sphere which is facing up and towards the light source, which is closest to the light source, is going to be the lightest. And here we have a uh, sort of a gradual transition from those darker areas which are facing away from the light source and the lighter ones. Now if we draw a more angular shape with surfaces like these, like this cube, and the light source is the same, again the surface which is further away from the light source is going to be the darkest and the top one which is facing up is going to be the lightest. So you have to keep that in mind. Now, uh, we can also add a little bit of shadow under them, being cast to the opposite side, the opposite of the light source. Now, the thing is that some, some of the rocks will be more smooth and round, others will be more angular. With smoother objects, you will have these gradual transitions in value. With these angular, jagged ones, you'll have clean edges to value. And you need to know how to draw both if you want to draw rocks. So uh, now we're going to start with the main part of this tutorial. This is my surface. Uh, tone paper covered with some clear gesso. It's a rough textured surface. And I'm going to start uh, with the first shape. And for drawing I'm going to use a black colored pencil to create the first sketch. I'm going to use a sharp black colored pencil. And that's what I'm going to start with. So the first one, the first shape, is going to be a little bit simpler. I want to start with something that is a bit more round and smooth because uh, stones can be more round and they can have more of those jagged edges. Depends on the shape, but let's start with a simpler, smoother one because I think it will be easier to understand and it will be easier to, sh uh, to shade, I think. So this is the shape of the rock and now I can try to add some other maybe variations in that shape, maybe a few angles here and there. But if I want to shade it I have to remember where my light source is and with all of the objects I plan to draw the light source will be the same, uh, just like in the initial demonstration. So. I'm going to make sure that the lower side of this rock and the right side 
is a bit darker because there's more shadow there and the left and the top will be lighter because it's facing the light source so here as you can see I shaded the part of the rock which is facing away from the light source I did a little bit of blending with the tortillion and then I started working with some grey pencils I'm going to use several grey pencils for this one so in terms of colour rocks vary a lot they, a lot of them are grey, some of them are a little bit darker some of them are a little bit more reddish and brown so there's a, there's a lot of different colours but this one is going to be grey I'm going to draw several grey stones and rocks so I used a lighter grey for this top left area and then went over the shadow area one more time with a black colored pencil to create a little bit of texture and then I used this darker grey to add a bit of shadow under the stone and to the right because uh, that the shadow is being cast to the opposite side now here at the very top at the part of this rock which is facing the light source I'm going to start adding some lighter values I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, light, very light uh, grey and it's the lightest grey that I have it's a warm light grey so I added a bit of that here and I added touches of a lighter grey even in the shadow side to create some suggestions of variations in the shape of the shadow side of the rock so every time you make a mark, whether it's a mark with a darker pencil or a lighter pencil, that mark will mean something. If it's um, a darker mark, it's going to be interpreted as a shadow area. If it's lighter, it's going to be interpreted as a part of the rock which is sticking out, protruding a little bit and catching more light from the light source. So this is the first rock. I don't think it's very complicated. It's uh, relatively simple. I did create a little bit of variation, but I think it should be easy enough to draw. With the second shape, I'm going to draw something a little bit more complex. There's going to be more angles, more of these surfaces. And the shape itself is going to be complex because I'm going to try to break it into a couple of smaller shapes so if this is the outline of the larger shape I'm going to try to add another smaller shape next to it here on the side and I'm going to draw some shadow areas in between and maybe draw some suggestions of cracks and some other um, surfaces which are maybe a little bit more vertical maybe facing away from the light source a little bit so the thing is that w once you start drawing a shape like this you usually don't really know exactly what it's going to look like but it's good to go with the flow and just uh, try to create some interesting shapes but you can't really go wrong as long as you are aware of the light source so if you stay consistent with the light source you're usually uh, going to come up with a, a shape that looks pretty realistic so this is my rock this is the second rock as you can see it's more complex in terms of shape and it has more angles it has a little bit of those smooth areas where there will be a gradual transition in value like here at the top but it also has these um, jagged shapes, jagged edges where we will require a clean edge or a sudden transition in value, a clear contrast in value. So again I'm moving in with some lighter greys for the lighter surfaces, surfaces which are facing towards the light source and you can see as I'm creating this contrast and the shape of the rock is starting to show. Now pay attention to the right side, the shadow side of the rock. You can see that uh, not all of it is completely dark. I added some lighter values in the shadow side to maybe 
make it look like there's a little bit of light coming from the other side, maybe a little bit of reflected light. And I can do the same thing at the bottom as well because the shadow side is not always just black or just dark gray. There's usually something going on there. There's usually a little bit of variation in terms of value there as well, depending on the light source, depending on the shapes, the surface, the texture of that surface, etc. Um, now I'm adding some lighter details on top, just like I did with the first one. And uh, I'm going to try to add more of this lighter value around those parts of this jagged surface which are sticking out more and which I expect will be catching or at least reflecting a little bit more light from the light source. Another thing that you need to understand while, while you're doing this is that you can always add some variation to the surface, to the shape of the rock by adding some cracks and some smaller suggestions of shapes, whether they are lighter marks or darker marks. And you can also add some random marks here and there and these small textures will uh, create an illusion of detail. So, as I always say, you have to allow the pencil to work for you. You don't have to try to draw everything deliberately. Sometimes when you just drag a pencil over a surface of the paper, especially a rough surface like this one, the pencil will naturally create some texture. Now you can choose to soften that texture to smooth it out by using your blending tools like tutilians or brushes, or you can leave some of the texture and create uh, an illusion like we're looking at a really rough surface. So you can create a more smoother looking stone or maybe a slightly more rough looking uh, rock. It's up to you. You can play around with these shapes and textures to come up with something you like. And I'm almost done with this second rock. I'm just putting down some finishing touches and cleaning up around the edges a little bit. So now I'm going to do the third one. Um, this one is also going to be a little bit more complex, but I want a slightly different shape. Uh, these two had some protruding um, parts, whether they were round or angular. I want this one to have like a small uh, dip or an indentation in the middle, and I'm going to see if I can explain this shape to the viewer. I'm going to draw a darker shape where the shadow area is and proceed in pretty much the same way that I did uh, with the previous two shapes but this time I'm going to try to create something that looks a little bit different. So once again I'm shading the parts of the rock which are facing away from the light source with the ones which are furthest away from the light source being the darkest. And adding a bit more black colored pencil at the bottom and on the right of all of these, uh, all of these surfaces. So once I've done that I'm going to start uh, working with some grays as I normally do, as I did with the other two shapes. Because like I said, I want some of these rocks to be grayish. Later I'm going to start playing around with colors a little bit more, but for now let's draw another gray one. I drew a little bit of shadow to the right, and now I'm going to shade the rest of this rock. The sides are a little bit darker, but the side which is facing left is a little bit lighter because it's facing the light source. And here at the top I'm going to start with some slightly darker colors and then I'm going to put some lighter ones on top of them. But here you can see how different this shape is from the other two. And that's actually what I wanted to do. I wanted to I, I wanted each and every one of them to be kind of unique and sort of random because that's the way rocks are. This surface, because it's rough and grinds down on the pencil, tends to create a little bit more residue, so if you've never, if you've never worked on sanded paper, you may be wondering why my pencils behave this way. That's just the way they behave on sanded papers. Uh, they behave a little bit more like pastel pencils. So now I'm drawing these 
lighter details, these highlights on the edges of the rock, on the lighter part of the rock, on the lighter surface of the rock which is facing the light source and adding some random lighter marks and textures here and there just to entertain the eye of the viewer and uh, create a suggestion of small details and shapes without actually um, having to draw every single detail because like I said it's important to let the pencil work for you so I think I'm almost done with the third rock I'm just polishing the edges a little bit, making them a little bit more irregular, adding some random cracks and details here and there, just to uh, get, it, get this to look as detailed as possible. You don't have to do this, you can just leave it, uh, leave it a little bit simpler. It will still work because of the basic relationships or larger relationships between lighter and darker value but because those are obviously more important but still these textures and tiny details are also important if you want to create a realistic looking uh, object. I'm moving on to the next rock. Again I'm going to use a black colored pencil to sketch out the initial uh, outline, the shape, but here I'm going to play around with colors a little bit. I want this one to be a bit more brownish I think so here I'm going to use uh, slightly uh, different colors, more reddish and brownish tones. But first I need to do the initial shading. I need to define the lighter and darker areas. And obviously the, uh, the right side is going to be a bit darker because that's the shadow side. I can add some other parts of the surface which are facing slightly away from the light source. I can try to make this a little bit more complicated than it initially looked uh, and now I'm starting to add some browns. I'm going to start with this darker brown which is a walnut brown and then I'm going to see if I can make it more interesting by adding some other colors but now I'm adding a bit more of this brown to the shadow areas. Cleaning up the edges a little bit and finishing the rest of the shadow area. So now for this lighter part of the rock, maybe I'm going to use some raw umber, if that's raw umber, I think it is. So let's see how that works. It's looking a little bit lighter, we're getting some interesting colors here, but the shape already looks convincing, it looks realistic. Now let's add some more reddish and orangey tones. This is a sanguine. This is kind of like a dull uh, orangey brown and it's giving this rock a slightly more of a reddish appearance. The color of the rocks depends on the minerals and their composition. So the color is obviously going to vary quite a bit. Now notice that here under this edge I'm drawing a little bit more shadow and I'm doing the same thing on the right side as well. But I'm drawing a little bit more shadow here and then in the middle part of that uh, vertical area I'm going to leave some lighter value but first I added a bit of shadow to the right now here on the side I'm also going to add some cracks and some suggestions of detail and at the top I'm adding some lighter marks, lighter details uh, where the rock would be catching or reflecting a bit of light but on the side like I said I left a little bit uh, more of that lighter value because I want it to look like uh, the rock is reflecting a bit of uh, light from below and on the right side I added a touch of blue like a cooler color in this shadow side to achieve a nice contrast so sometimes you can play around not only with shapes and textures but also with colors to see what you can come up with. So like I said that would be the the first of these brown rocks and the fourth rock in this tutorial. I'm just adding some tiny details here and there just to make it look a little more three-dimensional. Um, and that's it. 
I think it looks very detailed and realistic, some very nice colors and shadows. I'm going to make this one even more complex. Um, again, for this one I'm going to use the, those uh, brownish and reddish tones, but I want to uh, make an even more complex shape with a lot of irregular edges and surfaces and lots of texture, lots of detail and variation in color and um, shape. So I don't really know, uh, while I'm doing the sketch, I don't really know exactly what it's going to look like, but once I start shading, once I start adding these shadow areas, that's where, that's when the shape starts to appear to me and I start getting ideas about what the shape is supposed to look like. So some parts of this process are a little bit random and unpredictable not only to the viewer but also to to me the artist so anyway i shaded the lower side and the right side with a bit more value to establish those larger relationships between the light side and the shadow side and then of course i'm going in with some colors again i used a bit of the raw, raw amber and already you can see how uh, i've achieved a lot of texture it already looks like a rock. That's because this rough paper, the rough texture of the paper, allows you to create these effects. But if you don't like the texture, you can always soften it with tutilians. So that's not a problem. Again, I added a bit of shadow just to. Uh, I'm always adding a bit of shadow around the rocks just to make the drawing a bit more three dimensional, give it more depth, and give it some context I suppose so that it doesn't look like it's just hanging there on the paper. Uh, anyway now I'm adding some smaller finer details like these cracks and you can see how much more uh, complex the surface of the rock is especially on the right side where, where I have a lot of these smaller protruding bits. Um, so uh, if you compare it to the to the one on the left, it was mostly smooth on that side with just a few cracks. This one is uh, a bit more complex, and on top of on top of that, I'm adding some lighter marks with an ivory colored pencil. Uh, with the gray ones, I used either a light gray or a white for those highlights, and here I used uh, an ivory colored pencil, which is like a warm yellowish white so I think it goes well with these reddish and brownish tones and you can see how it made the jagged edges of the rock a lot more three-dimensional so I'm just gonna um, put it put down a few finishing touches to this one and then it'll be done uh, the final rock or the final drawing is going to be a group of rocks I want to uh, bunch a few shapes together so that I would show you what that looks like and how you can make like a, a small composition consisting of multiple rocks. And uh, I, I want to show not only the shapes of these rocks, but I also want to show maybe how they interact uh, uh, with one another in terms of in terms of lighting and shadows. Mm, I didn't really like this shape uh, so I uh, kept modifying it a little bit and then I decided to add uh, another taller, a larger uh, rock to the left. So here I already started adding some smaller stones at the, at the bottom because I want to show that this is a uh, rocky terrain and I uh, already started defining some of the shadow areas but I wasn't entirely happy uh, with the overall composition so I thought maybe I should throw in some more rocks and uh, at that point I decided to maybe add uh, like another taller shape here to the left so I wanted a couple of standing stones, standing rocks 
I thought that would be an interesting shape. But like I said, a lot of this is very random because I, uh, I often go in without a clear plan and that's probably the best way to draw rocks and the same goes with trees and canopies and things like that. With a lot of elements of landscape you want to make it random and unpredictable a little bit with a lot of variation. So now I have some nice looking shapes and a nice looking group of rocks and I already defined those shadows which are mostly on the right side obviously because our left uh, because our light source is on the left uh, for these group of rocks uh, I decided to make them all gray uh, like the like the ones at the top and now I'm adding some lighter bits lighter areas using a light cool gray or a light warm gray rather and then a touch of white here and there uh, where I want really strong highlights so it's uh, it's a good idea to increase the range of value because that helps you make the objects look more three-dimensional but it's usually a good idea to make sure that you use your lightest lights and darkest darks sparingly because that way uh, their their use is more effective, I suppose. But that depends on the shape of the object and uh, the lighting and the shadows and other things. So right now I'm just sort of trying to add some suggestions of smaller details, smaller cracks here and there, just to make these larger surfaces a little bit more interesting. I don't want to make them look too smooth or too simple. This is, after all, a, a bunch of... Uh, rocks, uh, larger rocks, maybe some of them are smaller than the others, but with these larger ones I want to at least give them a little bit more detail on those larger uh, surfaces and um, maybe a bit more texture to make it look uh, more interesting with, with, with more illusion of detail, which I can create just by um, dragging my pencil here and there shuffling the pencil here and there randomly adding some tiny smaller marks and wherever I add a small mark that maybe gives the viewer some kind of an idea about a shape and some of them I will discard and work over them some of them I will keep it really depends on uh, what I feel like uh, or what I feel about the shape um, so here I'm trying to add more shadow to this right side and what I'm trying to do here is connect the shadow areas. This is also a good idea in your drawings. You often want to connect the larger shadow areas into almost like a single shape and what that does it um, enhances the contrast between the light side and the uh, shadow side and helps the viewer understand the shapes better. So you, you simply achieve better looking shapes that are easier to understand for the viewers. So it's, it's a good idea to connect these shadow areas when you can. And uh, then you can have some of these lighter areas popping out of the shadow and add some lighter marks to those. Here and there I can make some suggestions of some dints and cracks here and there. And also I can uh, make it look like the taller rock here is casting a bit of shadow onto these lower rocks, this uh, group of rocks below it. So like I said, I want to make it uh, look like uh, the light source is uh, causing these taller ones to cast shadow onto the smaller rocks. So. I didn't choose to do, do a group of rocks just to have more rocks, but also to show um, how the shadows uh, interact uh, when we have multiple objects stacked together. So I'm just putting down some finishing touches by um, adding some smaller details and cleaning up some of the edges. But the drawing now is mostly done and I should probably stop messing with these smaller stones at the bottom because I'm mostly happy with the shape that I achieved. 
So these are all of the rocks and stones. I just want to say a few final words. Um, you can see that through the video I progressed from slightly simpler shapes to more complex ones. I started with this smoother stone which is more like a single shape and um, there are more of these smoother transitions there and then I uh, moved on to these more complex uh, more complex shapes uh, with more of these jagged edges and more clean edges to value more complex shapes within a shape. I played around with colors and textures a little bit and finally I finished it off with this group of rocks here because I wanted to show you not only the variety of shapes but how they interact with each other and with the light source because if you remember the light source was always on the left side it was coming from the left and above and you can uh, see how uh, these rocks not only have a little bit of shadow on the right side and down below but they also cast a bit of shadow onto some of the rocks next to them so that's just something i wanted to show you i hope you found this tutorial useful and um, like i said i'm going to do a series i uh, the next one is probably going to be on trees and bushes and foliage and things like that so i'm going to see you in the next one thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already don't forget to check out my other videos and if you want to see more content and longer videos you should check out my patreon that's it for this one bye for now